One of the most significant judicial rulings about the executive department, sections 69 to 108, interpreted the legislative implementation of section 90, which states that contested elections for governor and lieutenant governor shall be determined by both houses of the General Assembly according to such regulations as may be established by law. So the, there's a question of governorship and lieutenant governorship. The houses of the General Assembly, the legislature, the legislative branch is going to solve it. That's what the fucking Constitution says. The issue in this case was the constitutionality of the process by which the General Assembly determined the winner of the controversial gubernatorial election of 1899. The Court of Appeals upheld that process, which involved the contest board that was chosen um, by lot, but was heavily Democratic and found for the Democratic candidate. A decision unsurprisingly endorsed by the heavily Democratic General Assembly. The Kentucky Supreme Court ruled in 2010 that by virtue of Section 93, the state Senate possesses the exclusive right to confirm gubernatorial appointments to the Council for Post-Secondary Education, and therefore Governor Ernie Fletcher's appointment of Virginia Fox to the Council was valid, even though only the Senate had confirmed her appointment. There is no vacancy for Governor Steve Brashear to fill. Section 77 grants the governor very broad power to pardon both before and after conviction of power. The Kentucky Supreme Court confirmed when it upheld the constitutionality of Governor Ernie Fletcher's blanket pardon of members of his administration who are under investigation by a grand jury for alleged violations of the state merit system. So Ernie Fletcher went ahead and just pardoned all the people that had um, broke the law. So I guess the governor can pardon people that, that that are breaking the law that's on his team, which is kind of remarkable. Usually wait at the end of your administration to, you know, um, admit all those mistakes. Because if all of them are pardoned for doing criminal wrongdoing, chances are he was doing criminal wrongdoing too. Sections 109 to 24, 140, 142, and 144, which concern the judicial branch, have been the subject of relatively few Kentucky Supreme Court cases. The 1975 Judicial Amendment created a modern unified judiciary described in Section 109 as the judicial power of the Commonwealth vested exclusively in one court of justice which shall be divided into a Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, a trial court of general jurisdiction known as the Circuit Court, and a trial court of limited jurisdiction known as the District Court. So that's fascinating. A trial court of general jurisdiction known as a circuit court, general jurisdiction, so they can have jurisdiction over anything. And a trial court of limited jurisdiction is the district court. Usually the district court is the small things and the circuit court are the bigger things. Um, but a general jurisdiction, maybe that's why the family court is in the circuit court because it says section 109 is what the 1975 Judicial Amendment created a modern unified judiciary described in section 109. So 1975 overhauled the judiciary. One of the branches of government was completely overhauled in 1975 through an amendment. And in section 109, the judicial power of the Commonwealth vested exclusively in one court of justice which shall be divided into a Supreme Court, a Court of Appeals, a trial court of juris general jurisdiction as a circuit court and a trial court of limited jurisdiction known as the district court. The Kentucky Supreme Court held unconstitutional a statute that prohibited the judiciary from enjoining an order of the Alcoholic Beverage Board that revoked a liquor license while the order was being appealed, in part because the statute violated Section 109, which vests judicial powers exclusively in the Court of Justice. The court has ruled that Section 110, which deals with its jurisdiction, gives it exclusive jurisdiction to hear and determine any calls that has as its ultimate objective a judgment declaring what the court must do or not do, and therefore it could hear a case involving a petition brought by a public defender to inspect data assembled by the court concerning the imposition of the death penalty in Kentucky. The court ruled in ex parte auditor of public accounts 609-1980 that Section 116 gave it exclusive authority over the State Bar Association and therefore the Auditor of Public Accounts had no authority to audit the association's books. So that's, you know, wild. <laughs> 
The Constitution sections 145 to 55 about suffrage and elections have produced few decisions, one of the most interesting of which concerned an effort by the state attorney general pursuant to section 150 in legislation enacted under its authority to have the charter of the Kentucky Jockey Club forfeited and substantial fines imposed because the club had allegedly engaged in corrupt political activities and unlawful pari mutual gambling. Shortly after the filing of this lawsuit, the club, the club transferred its assets, Churchill Downs and Latonia Racetracks, to a Delaware corporation. The Attorney General pursued his lawsuit, asserting that the transfer was a sham to avoid prosecution. The Court of Appeals affirmed the uh, Circuit Court's dismissal of the lawsuit, ruling that the Pari mutual gambling was legal and that the alleged political transgressions were insufficient to warrant forfeiture or a fine. Framers of the Constitution wrote the sections on municipal municipalities, so municipalities, sections 156 to 68, in order to provide for efficient urban governments and to limit municipal and county indebtedness. Local governments evaded limitations imposed by section 158. Cities, towns, counties, and taxing districts shall not incur indebtedness to an amount exceeding maximum percentages on the value of the taxable property therein to be estimated by the last assessment previous to the incurring of the indebtedness by selling revenue bonds financed by the revenue of the facility under construction and not guaranteed by the government itself a mechanism declared constitutional by the Kentucky Supreme Court revenue and taxation sections section 169 to 182 sought to limit statutory tax exemptions and to provide for uniform tax assessments. Amendments that exempted household goods created and enlarged a homestead exemption and exempted religious property undermined somewhat the effort to limit tax exemptions. The Court of Appeals ruled that licensed taxes must be uniform but need not be levied on all trades, occupations, or professions and that different fees may be imposed on each class into which a trade, occupation, or profession may fairly be divided. County tax assessors ignored section 172 requirement. County tax assessors ignored session, section 172's requirement that all taxable property be assessed at its fair market value until the Court of Appeals mandated strict compliance with this section in Russman v. Luckett, 1965. Thereafter, most tax assessors made a good faith effort to comply with the section, section 177 prohibits the Commonwealth from owning all or part of a company or corporation, but the Kentucky Supreme Court has ruled that a state sale of revenue bonds to finance a private industrial development as an incentive for Toyota Motor Corporation to build an assembly plant in Scott County did not violate this section. By far the most significant decision concerning the Constitution's education sections 183 to 189 was a ruling in Rose v. Council for a better education. So the Kentucky Supreme Court ruling in 1989, Section 183's requirement that the General Assembly shall, by appropriate legislation, provide for an efficient system of common schools throughout the state, the school districts. Um, it obligated the legislature to provide adequate funding for all school districts and to monitor the school districts to ensure that they're providing an adequate education. This case provides another example of the Kentucky Supreme Court finding a right in the state constitution that the United States Supreme Court has not found in the U.S. Constitution. So it found education, the right to be um, an equitable education. So the Sikh formula, CARA, all that came from um, Section 1. 60, um, 182, right, and that was the section, <laughs> um, 183, my bad, so section 183, you know, shall by appropriate legislation provide for an efficient system of common schools through the state. In 2002, voters ratified an amendment that repealed 10 antiquated regulatory sections relating to corporations, so 10 fucking sections, 10 regulations to corporations that somebody considered outdated, that's what they're saying, related to corporations was um, annulled, it was revoked, they changed it, 2002, and then they revised section 190 to declare that the General Assembly would provide for the formation, organization, and regulation of corporations 
except as otherwise provided by the Constitution of Kentucky. A revision that had been recommended by the Special Commission on Constitutional Review of 1987. Most of the appellate jurors' prudence that the repealed sections engendered occurred early in the 20th century. In 2000, voters ratified an amendment uh, that abolished the Railroad Commission, Section 209, but left in place the other sections of the Constitution that dealt with railroads. What few appellate cases these sections have produced were mostly decided in the early 20th century. An exception is Commonwealth X Real Luckett v. Louisville v. <laughs> Luckett v. L&N Railroad Corporation, 1972. Certification denied 1972, wherein the Court of Appeals ruled that Section 210 prohibits a railroad from establishing an independent securities business. So they were still able to use, you know, the Constitution against the railroad in 1972, but they had abolished the Railroad Commission in 2000. And the voters did this, right? They don't, they don't want a, a constitutional convention, but they do want to abolish the Railroad Commissioner. Sections 219 to 23 concerning the militia have been the subject of few appellate decisions, one of which involved a ruling by the Court of Appeals that Section 221 authorizes the General Assembly to provide by statute that under certain circumstances, militia officers should receive the same rate of pay as corresponding officers in the U.S. Army. The general provisions, Section 224 to 55, cover, cover a variety of empowerments. In limitations, two of the most controversial are sections 228 and 239. The former, the 228 section, requires legislators and attorneys before taking office or being admitted to practice to take an oath that they have neither fought a duel with deadly weapons nor sent or accepted a challenge to fight a duel with deadly weapons nor acted as a second in carrying a challenge nor aided or assisted any person thus offending. So you weren't part of a duel, you weren't the second shooter, the first shooter, you didn't help with a duel, you weren't part of a duel in any way, shape or form. The latter disqualifies it uh, from any office of honor or profit in the Commonwealth persons who present or accept the challenge to a duel with deadly weapons. So you can't accept any office nor could you uh, run a business. You couldn't run a business um, for a profit or you couldn't have any office of honor. So you get nothing. You get nothing from um, the, if you have a duel. You might even get shot, right? So anybody who presents uh, or accepts a challenge to a duel of deadly weapons, these sections have almost never been litigated and many would-be reformers have called for their repeal. The Kentucky Supreme Court has ruled that Section 230, which declares that all money drawn from the state treasury be appropriated by law, prohibits the governor from withdrawing funds to finance executive functions when the legislator has adjourned without enacting such appropriations. Section 231 authorizes the General Assembly to enact laws concerning the manner and in what court suits may be brought against the Commonwealth. Pursuant to this section, the legislator has enacted statutes that waive sovereign immunity for certain governmental acts of negligence and breach of contract. The Court of Appeals ruled that a city is liable for injuries caused by negligence except in the performance of legislative, judicial, quasi-legislative, or quasi-judicial functions. Gas Service Company versus the City of London, 1985. But it continued to maintain the general immunity of counties from liability for injuries caused by negligence. 242, Section 242, which provides for just compensation for government takings of private property for public use, have been the subject of much litigation. For example, the Court of Appeals has ruled that Section 242 subjects cities and counties to liability for damage to private property by a public works project. Section 246 limits the annual salaries of state public officers, the mayor of Louisville, certain judges, and all other public officers to amounts ranging from $12,000 to $7,200. The Court of Appeals, in an example of a decision that adapted the Constitution to modern reality, ruled that Section 246 permits salaries to be adjusted to reflect the purchasing power of the dollars as in 1949, the year in which the section was amended. Constitutional framers adopted Section 251 to settle the ownership of lands granted under the laws of Virginia before Kentucky statehood or before 1820 under the laws of Kentucky. The section specifies that persons claiming 
land under the grants against any person claiming such lands by possession to a well-defined boundary under a title of record need to commence an action to recover such land within five years after this constitution shall go into effect or within five years after the occupant may take occupation. The Court of Appeals undermined Section 251 until 1941 by decisions favoring absentee Virginia land title claimants, for example, Warfield Natural Gas Company versus Danks, 1938, but reversed itself in 1941 when it ruled in a conflict between absentee owners claiming the title under Virginia grants and occupants with a later Kentucky grant that Section 251 gave title to the latter. So some Kentucky grants were starting to be accepted after 1941.